Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Myers, and I am a worship arts major. I am a senior this year, and uh, this is my senior presentation. Uh, so you have endured, maybe sat through a few uh, presentations today, and I would love to play a little bit of a game with you guys, if that's okay. Uh, the first thing that you need to know is we're going to play tic-tac-toe, and the second thing you need to know is you have 30 seconds uh, to find a partner, play the game, go. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and give me pencils. And you lacked direction and or empowerment. Bill Hybels, uh, a pastor over at Little Creek down the road, uh, suggests that after he meets with his volunteers, uh, after about a year of them serving on teams with him, when they want to leave, these are the three main reasons that they want to leave. Because they were not given adequate time frames uh, to accomplish the things that they were given. They lacked the resources to accomplish those things and they were not given empowerment or direction. My topic is uh, volunteers within ministry, specifically as it relates to worship ministry. The worship pastor position uh, has a lot of different roles uh, that, it, that comes along with it within a church. Uh, some of those being Sunday service construction, the integration of parts within worship, music, scheduling team members, work with the head pastor in media, and across the board, the most frustrating uh, thing that I have found uh, that comes from uh, worship pastors is the recruiting and the care for volunteers. I think it's very important to identify what a volunteer is before we really dive into this, and uh, the care and feeding of volunteers uh, by Douglas Johnson, who's an author and also the Director of Research at the United Methodist General Board of Global, Mich Global Ministries in New York, which is a long title. Uh, he has a very big business card. Uh, it says, within the context of the church, a volunteer is seen, is seen as a person who is willing to assist in the work of the church at no cost to the church. That is very important because for a couple of different reasons. The first thing is that Churches need volunteers. They cannot run without them. The very first reason uh, for this is found in Matthew 9, 37 and 38, uh, which says, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. As worship leaders, it is fairly easy to uh, accomplish this goal because to send out people as laborers into the harvest uh, we are in a great position to do that. We recruit volunteers to play on uh, music teams. We uh, train people up to be audio engineers or to uh, run slides or to run lights. Uh, it is um, just very conducive to uh, this. Another reason that volunteers are very important to the church is uh, monetary uh, gain for them. Uh, in a 550-member uh, church, on average, uh, about 12,740 hours are put in by volunteers a year. If a, uh, if a pastor, sorry, if a pastor makes around $57,385 a year, uh, which I got from Payscale, uh, which takes the average across the United States, um, volunteers save a, an average of about a of about six full-time salaries, or uh, $350,000 a year in labor for churches. <coughs> Another really interesting thing to dive into when working with volunteers is how they're motivated. Obviously, they're not getting paid, um, because that's how we're saving the $350,000. Uh, and uh, sorry, I looked into a study done by Joseph Cookston, 
his dissertation, uh, he graduated from uh, Anderson University and was writing his dissertation for Trinity International. And he, uh, in his summary, said that people primarily volunteer for the community that provides them. So what does this mean for worship leaders? Uh, worship leaders uh, are in charge of the branch of ministry within a church that probably has the most visible exposure to the congregation. Uh, and every Sunday there is a team of musicians that get up on stage and serve the church in front of its congregants. So this team is comprised of obviously other people and uh, a, a lot of times it can be seen as a family or as a community or uh, friendships are built through that. That's a huge motivator. Um, as I uh, just mentioned, the, the worship ministry is very public. It is a very um, highly um, seen within the church uh, volunteer ministry. Uh, a lot of times it involves uh, musicians up on stage and because of that, uh, standards should be put in place when recruiting volunteers. Uh, Bob Coughlin, in his book, Worship Matters, says that even though musicians aren't necessarily elders or teachers, their presence in front of the congregation week after week implies their life is worthy of emulation, not flawless, but demonstrating the fruit of the gospel. Due to the amount of exposure to the congregation, as well as the shepherding quality of the work they are doing, putting words of praise and worship into the mouths of other believers, it is the role of the worship leader to make sure that the volunteers are qualified, not only in the realm of playing music, but perhaps even more importantly in the realm of their spiritual walks with Christ, before they call on someone to leave on that platform. So as a worship leader, when looking to recruit volunteers for ministry, uh, it is vitally important to uh, get to know them as people, to be able to uh, have a conversation with them and know their, uh, their background, uh, to be able to know that they are believers. Uh, I ran into a lot of research that would argue for evangelical volunteer ministry, and um, from uh, I would have to agree with uh, Bob Coughlin and say that while uh, the integration of musicians that aren't believers on your worship team could be beneficial, um, it is a leadership role within the church that is uh, seen by an entire congregation. And um, because of that, um, that is one of the, the, the standards that I personally would put uh, in my uh, guidelines in recruiting. Um, the guidelines are very important to establish and to communicate uh, because of Proverbs 20, 9, 18, uh, which says, where there is no vision, the people perish, and we don't want our churches to perish. Uh, so casting a vision is very important. And... Um, Parish, I think, applies in this sense as well due to burnout uh, within volunteer ministry. Uh, it um, can uh, if if a vision is not cast well and guidelines are not communicated well by a worship leader, uh, burnout can happen quicker, and um, the relationship between the volunteer and the minister uh, will suffer. And because of that. Uh, you will continue to have to um, recruit, and you'll be in this perpetual uh, need of recruiting. So in short, uh, as worship leaders, we are called to uh, equip our volunteers well. Uh, we need to give them the paper. We need to give them the pencil to play tic-tac-toe. We need to give them the guidelines, and we need to, um, to set them up for success and to pour into them.
No, the slide is fine with the content. In the interest of time, let me just get my point. <laughs> a person who is willing to assist in the work of the church, and here's the phrase that is troublesome, for no cost to the church. Now, my comrades, colleagues will perhaps accuse me of arguing semantics here, but I know what the gentleman intends is that the church won't pay any salary. But it's been my experience <laughs> that that's not the only thing that happens when this definition of volunteerism is put in place. There's no training. There's no appreciation. There's no, hey, there's a seminar coming up, and as a volunteer, we think it would be good for you to do this, and so we're going to go ahead and cover the cost of that, and we're going to pick up your babysitting tab for you, too, so you can go. There's none of that. And so I know the gentleman wasn't specifically talking about that, but I see that as a huge, huge issue. And again, I'm probably a little more sensitive to it given the uh, occurrences in my life in the last year or so. But um, can you just reflect on that for a minute? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a lot of my research uh, has looked into um, in terms of the cost of the church. Uh, with, within this context, it was referring to monetary, being able to uh, supplement pay um, or keep them on staff. Um, but uh, within a volunteer ministry, uh, it is the, um, it should be the goal of the church, uh, specifically within worship ministry, the goal of the worship pastor to um, provide other means of compensation, whether it be um, training or um, being able to uh, provide um, like a Starbucks gift card of thanks or um, one of the, um, I believe it was Bob Coughlin that was talking about his Christmas parties that he throws for uh, Sovereign Grace every year um, that honors to select volunteers um, and being able to pour into them in other ways um, because of the um, the lack of ability to, to pay them. I appreciate Warren's observation, the semantics. I think it would be probably truer to say um, willing to assist in the work of the church with no effort put forth by the church. There's no effort to train them. There's no effort to help them in their work. There's no effort to put out the flame when they're burning out. Right. There's just no effort on the behalf of because they're easy commodities to replace, frankly. And that's, that's where it comes in. Um, so, so you, you talk very generally about like volunteers and, you know, their purpose in the church and like what they're doing and stuff, but like pragmatically, like what would you suggest is the best way to incorporate them? Like if you got, uh, I mean, with the volunteers that we have in church, um, what's the best way to to incorporate them, to teach them, or to involve them? You know, like and not just using them as disposable, as like, you know, like I've got uh, this volunteer as my basis, and it's like, what can, what would you suggest to do? That's like, okay, they're not just my basis, you know, but they're like someone who is giving something to the team. You know what I mean? Right. I think that um, he hit it on the head. Like, they are not just a volunteer. They're not just a bassist. They're not just a welcome person at the door. They're not just a sound guy. Um, I think that as church leadership pours into people as individuals, as opposed to as a commodity or what they can offer to the church, um, I think that's where true um, a true volunteer ministry can thrive. Um, where people are poured into, where people are, um, I guess, invested in. And within that, uh, let's say you have someone who says that they're a guitar player, and you audition them, and they're not really a guitar player. Um, I think that uh, within uh, a relational aspect, being able to hear their story, being able to um, hear their uh, likes and their dislikes and um, things like that, it allows you to not just be like, oh, maybe 
like, maybe we won't put you on the stage on Sunday, but actually being able to be like, hey, like, let's either, let's do lessons, or let's um, see if we can hook you up with another guitar player in our church that will be able to pour into you. Um, if that's an actual desire that they have, or if they're just desiring to serve, finding a different avenue that they could thrive in. Thank you, Kevin.